hello, hello. How do you do? Pleasant Green Baptist Church, we're delighted to see you. We're exalting Christ, embracing community, and engaging culture. Hello, hello, hello from Pleasant Green. This is another day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Brothers and sisters, I thank all of you all for worshiping with us this morning, uh, virtually from wherever you are and whatever device you're on. We give God praise and glory for your presence here with us today because he is present wherever we are present together. I wanna to remind you that this is our communion Sunday. So take a moment and get your communion elements, your juice, your crackers, your bread, whatever you're going to use to celebrate and commemorate uh, the communion of Christ with one another. As we get ready to dine with him, you'll be ready to dine with us when the time comes. Now let's worship him together in song. Hello, hello, hello. How do you do? At Pleasant Green Baptist Church, we're so glad to see you. We're exalting Christ, embracing community, and engaging culture. Hello, hello, hello from Pleasant Green. Remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship him with the singing of hymns and praising of songs.
Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the service. Please remember to get to Pleasant Green Baptist Church. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. I would ask that you would turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8 today. Uh, today, we're going to end our uh, time together on old freedom, looking at the cry that comes from uh, the conscience of our people. And today we want to look at the cry of commitment. Yeah, the cry of commitment from Deuteronomy 8. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at how freedom cries out in the condition of our people, in the condition of our plight, in the condition of what God has purposed for our lives. And what we want to conclude with today, here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, is verses 1 through 11. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6 and then verse 11 for our hearing today. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and take possession of the land the Lord swore to your ancestors. Remember the Lord your God led you into the entire journey for these 40 years in the wilderness so that he might humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you by letting you go hungry. Then he gave you manna to eat, which you and your ancestors had not known before, so that you might learn that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing also did not wear out. Your feet did not swell those 40 years. Keep this in mind that your Lord, your God, has been disciplining you just as a father disciplines his son. Keep the commands of the Lord, your God, by walking in his ways and fearing him. So when you eat, you get full, praise the Lord, your God, for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord, your God, by failing to keep his commands, ordinances, and statutes that I'm giving you today. Good morning again, brothers and sisters in this virtual space. We thank God for you worshiping with us. Want to remind you that before the time of captivity, before the time of their confinement, before the crisis of their corruption, before the conflict of their conscience took place, Israel had been commanded to follow the Lord. We've been looking in Ezra chapter, uh, of the book of Ezra, and now we're going backwards to Deuteronomy to see what was going on. How did they get to the place and space that they knew and understood that they had something worth celebrating from their captivity and their confinement? How did they get to the place where they knew that what was going wrong in their community and in their country was that they had stopped following the Lord? Stop following his word. And now they're being compelled to follow again with all of their heart, to make a conscious commitment to all of his command. Today, we want to look at the cry of commitment from Deuteronomy 8 and see how that plays out in our life today, just as it played out in their life then. What we see here in these first five verses in Deuteronomy 8 is that a conscious commitment activates the first things first. It activates the first things first. God had said through Moses, tell the people who I have chosen. Tell those who I have adopted as my own children. Tell those who I have delivered by a strong and mighty arm from the land of Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh, from the oppression and the obstacles and the obstinance of a land that had pressed them down, who no longer rep reverenced and respected what Joseph had done. Tell them to activate a conscious faith that prioritizes the first things first. Remember, is Israel had come up out of Egypt and they were wandering in the wilderness. Moses was getting ready to go off the scene. And he called them all together and said, now these are the commands that the Lord has given to us. These are the words that God has given to us. We have been wandering around for these 40 years and God has given us 
an instruction of what we ought to do, how we ought to do it, where we ought to do it, when we, God has given us everything that we need in order to live. Here in this passage, we sign that Moses says, be careful, take care, be concerned about, make sure that you are following everything that I am giving you today because I'm giving it to you based on what God has given to me. And he says, look, I need you to follow it so that you may live and that you may prosper and that you may enter and take possession of what God has granted for you to have. God says to us, if we activate a first things first commitment to him that we will not only live, but we will, we will prosper, we will increase, we will take possession of everything that he has in store for us. It is God who says to us that we have the ability to get well. It is God that gives us the ability to maintain our health. It is God that gives us the opportunity to be fruitful and multiply and have good things in our life, to have good food and good, uh, good finances and good faith and good marriages and good family. Everything that we have that is good comes from God. And he says, the way that you make sure that you are committed to me is to activate your first things first. And how does he ask us to do that? He says, because I have given you everything that you need, I need you to remember to be humble. Yeah, I need you to remember to be humble. He says in this text, remember I led you your entire journey. I was there with you through your wilderness wandering. I was there with you when you were wounded and worried. I was there with you even when you were being wicked. I have been there with you through everything, every win, every uh, moment, every a thing that has happened in your life, I have been there with you. I have been leading you. I have been guiding you. I have been guarding you. I have been grooming you. I have been growing you. You did not get here on your own. You did not get here by yourself. I have given you everything that you have had, everything that you have needed, everything you have wanted, and even the things that you have desired. Ah, when you didn't have anything in the world, I gave you everything. When you didn't have what all that you thought you needed, I gave you manna from heaven. When you were thirsty, I gave you water to drink out of rocks. When you were, when you didn't have shoes to wear, I made sure that your feet did not wear out. I have been there with you and I need you to remember to be humble because I have given you everything that you need. But not only do I need you to remember to be humble, I need you to realize how you got there. You didn't get here here by yourself. You didn't get here on your own. It wasn't because of your own education. It was not because of your own smarts and your own intelligence and your own abilities. It was because I was there protecting you. I was there providing for you. I was there present with you making sure that no one was bothering you when you could have been harmed and hurt and hindered all of the way. My hand of protection has been upon you since I called you to myself. All of these years, all of this time, I have been there for you. And I need you to realize how you get here. And if you're going to make a commitment to me, I need you to activate what's first and foremost in your life. I need you to understand that I'm humbling you and disciplining you and making sure that you are prepared to go out and do everything that I'm preparing you for. So I need you to remember that you do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of my mouth. God says you can live by bread alone if you choose to. You can live for the bread if you choose to. In other words, you can live for material goods of life alone. You can live to have stuff and all of the things of the world alone, but you will never live 
through this bread alone. You will never be able to satisfy your soul with only the material things of life. You will never be able to sufficiently live in the way that you think you ought to only by having good food and good clothes and good car and good houses and good property and good things like that. You need to have something that's good on the inside of you. And that's a good word from a great God. Oh, praise his holy name today. There must be something more, something greater, someone greater for which you live, in who you live, why you live, for it is in Christ that we live, move, and have our being. It is because of his goodness that is activated in us that we have a right to live as free and as fervently as we are living in this land. And when we cry out for freedom today, it is only because of the goodness of God that we're able to cry freedom in the first place. It is only because of his goodness and his greatness in our life that we can activate all of the good stuff that we have coming to us. And so God says, I need you to have a conscious commitment to activate first things first. But then he says, not only I need you to activate it, he says, a conscious commitment to your faith, to this freedom that you have is to anticipate a fixed focus in life. Here in verse six, he says to us through his word, through Deuteronomy here in Moses, he says to us, Keep the command of the Lord by walking in his ways and fearing him. That means fearing him only, not fearing the world, but fearing his word, fearing his wrath, because only he has the power, only he has the authority, only he has the control to change the trajectory of your life. And he says, not only do I need you to activate your commitment, I need you to anticipate with a fixed focus of what you're going to do. I need you to remember and realize that God has done and will do for you and I everything that we need him to do. He will give us everything that we need to have. He has already given us everything we need. But when he does that, we can anticipate why he does it and when he's going to do it. He's going to do it right when we need it. He's going to do it right before we get to the place where we get ready to give up. He's going to do it right at the lean when we are crying and murmuring and shouting all over the place and when we're confused and in the middle of utter chaos and don't know where our next thing is going to come from, we know that he's going to show up right then and there. We can anticipate him showing up. We can anticipate his goodness. We can anticipate his greatness. We can anticipate his protection, his power, his presence, and his provision. And that, brothers and sisters, allows us to fix our focus on where he is trying to take us, where he's trying to do. And you say, well, how do I do that? How do I walk in fear of him? How do I keep all of his commandments? How do I know that he is doing good for me when it looks like God awful things are happening around me? He says, listen, I need you to remember to learn to recall his purpose in discipling you. Yeah, brother, recall his purpose in discipling you. He is not punishing you by making you hungry. He is not punishing you when you are thirsty. He is not punishing you when you don't have everything you need right at the time that you think you need it. He is putting you in a position to prosper you, to understand his purpose in your life. He said to us here in the text, he said, make sure that you keep in mind that God is disciplining you just like a father disciplines his son because when you were hungry he fed you won't a father feed his son won't a father give his son a uh, water when he's thirsty and won't a son give a give his son good instruction when he's going astray when he's in uh, even a swat every now and again when he's doing the wrong thing listen i remember just the other day josiah came to me and said jumped up on my lap and said daddy i want to be able to do whatever i want to be able to do is that all right with you and i said son without even remembering that I was preparing for this message today. I said, son, you can do whatever you wanna do as long as you 
Me and God agree that that's what you're supposed to be doing because my responsibility is to discipline you and to grow you and to groom you into the man that God wants you to be. And he looked at me and his five-year-old mind and said, okay, daddy, I think I got it. Thank you, daddy. And he gave me a big hug and ran out the room. But even Josiah has to understand that God has a purpose in discipling him and disciplining him so that he can be what God desires for him to be. And a father who has to discipline his son is, is just like God disciplining us. And so when God tells us that, no, you didn't do that thing right, and oh, I need you to do this better. And God says to us, oh, I need you to understand that you're gonna go hungry for a little while. And I need you to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I need you to hunger and thirst after my word. I need you to walk in my way. I mean, if you walk in my way, your shoes will not wear out. If you walk in my way, your feet will not get tired. If you walk in my way, even though you get weak and wounded and weary, I'm going to raise you up to make sure that you have everything you need because my purpose is inside of you and it is to discipline you to do what I am calling you to do. And he says, not only recall his purpose in disciplining us, but then he says, brothers and sisters, because he's disciplining us, recognize that his plan is for delivering us. Yeah, brothers and sisters, how great our God is. He says, recognize that his plan is for delivering us. He says in verses seven through nine in there, look, I'm going to give you places to live. I'm going to give you stuff to eat. I'm going to put you in a good land. I'm going to put you in a place that you have never been before. I'm going to deliver you from all your hardship. I'm going to deliver you from all your hard times. Now you might not get delivered all at once. Life not, not won't be no crystal stare all the time. Life won't be real easy, but I'm going to deliver you even in the midst of your dilemma, even in the midst of your hard time and your stuff that you're having to deal with, I'm going to deliver you because my power will keep you. My authority will hold you. My, 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 my ability will give you everything that you need and it will also guard you as you go. Oh, brave brothers and sisters, when we activate our commitment to God and anticipate our focus with God, God says, I can deliver you and and discipline you and keep you to where you go. And because they, and because we have a activated commitment and an anticipating commitment, he says we can have an, a conscious commitment that appreciates. And watch this, watch this. I know it's a play on words, but you gotta see this, how I put it together. He says a conscious commitment appreciates our failure to forget. Yeah, it appreciates the failure of forgetting. Here in verses 10 and 11, God says to us, now look now, when you get to the place where you, you're eating, when you're in that house that I'm going to give you, when you're in that good land and that good space and that good place that I have provided for you, when you have eaten and are well filled and full, don't forget to praise the Lord God for the good things he has given you. God has given us so much good stuff. He says, when you eat, and when you are full, he says, listen, I want you to turn and appreciate that I am the one who has done it for you. And he says, be careful that you do not forget that the Lord your God, by failing to keep my commandments, my ordinances, my statutes that I'm giving you. Moses wanted the children of Israel to remember and understand and recognize that God was going to do some great things in their life. Even though Moses was getting ready to go, he needed them to understand that God is going to go before you. God is going to give you something greater. God is going to give you the good land of of the promise and he been when you get the promise and when you're filled with the promise and when you are feasting on the promise learn to appreciate what God has given to you by failing to forget that he has given it all to you because after everything God has done for you after he's filled you up after he's quenched your thirst after he's satisfied your appetite after he's given you every good thing you can ever hope for in life he says don't forget to appreciate him 
Don't forget about God. Don't forget to give him some praise. Don't forget to shout hallelujah to his name. Don't forget to say thank you, Lord. Don't forget to shout his praises. Don't forget to recognize and remember and reflect on how far he's brought you and what he's carried you through and what he's brought you over and what he's brought you through, how he's delivered you, how he's disciplined you, how he's discipled you, how he's made a way out of no way, how he made you able to pay your bills when you didn't have any money. Don't forget to uh, do all of the praising that God deserves. God deserves all of our praise and he inhabits the praise of his people. Fail to forget all that he has done and is doing in your life by reflecting on his goodness. Oh, brothers and sisters, don't get caught up thinking that you came up on your own, raised yourself up by your own bootstrap, floated, built your own boat and sailed it on out as if God somehow didn't have anything to do with how you got to where you're getting. God is, has been good to you. He has been so good to me. It makes me want to shout every morning when I think about how good and great he has been to me. Yes, we've had some troubles. Yes, we've had some trials. Yes, we've had some tribulations. Yes, we've had some sickness. We've had some sin in our life. We've had some struggles in our time. We're having some struggles even right now, but God is still good in our life. God is still granting us his glory. God is still giving us everything that we need. And we, as we reflect on his goodness, we are reminded that only he is the one who is keeping us in the middle of every storm, in the middle of every stress, in the middle of every struggle. It is goodness of God, the goodness of God that is keeping us alive. It is his own goodness that is keeping us in the middle of a pandemic. Even though we believe that the pandemic is winding down, it is his presence, his power, his authority, and his wonderful work in our life that is holding us in the middle of all of this. And we need to reflect on his goodness and shout hallelujah to him and shout amen to him. And don't fail and fail to forget that he is still in charge of everything that's going on. Whenever you have an issue or a situation or a circumstance, remember to reflect on his goodness and know that he is in charge. And when he is in charge, he got it under control. And all oh, brothers and sisters reflect on his goodness and then respond with the gratitude that is necessary and needed so that you don't get comfortable not celebrating God. There should never be a time in our life that we get comfortable not celebrating God because of everything that he has done, because of everything that he does. Even if all we do is wake up in the morning, God has been good. Even if it's raining and storming in our life, God has been good. Even if we don't have steak and filet mignon, if all we got is bologna and ham sandwiches, God has been good. Even if we don't have a job today, God kept us through the time. God makes it possible for us to have gratitude and we ought to respond in everything in our life with the gratitude that is owed to him. Somebody ought to be giving him glory right now because he's been good to you. He's been better than good to you and he's being good to you right now because he's given you the ability to be present with him in this world. Oh, brothers and sisters, I got to go now. We got to have communion. But I just want you to know that our peace, our prosperity, our provision, our protection, our purpose in life, his plan for our life is dependent on his faithfulness, not our foolishness. His faithfulness guards us and guides us. But because he has been faithful, even if we don't know where it comes from, or when it's going to come, we know that following after him puts us in the position to receive all of the blessings and bounty and beauty that God has to offer us in this space and place, in this good land that he has placed us, in this good space that he has provided for us. Wherever we are under the authority of his eye is a good place to be. The question is, are we going to be faithful to him in the process because of his faithfulness to us? Can we commit to trusting him through every process, through every problem, and through every pain? That, brothers and sisters, is the message for the day. Let's pray together. God, we ask you now to help us to remember that your faithfulness calls us to faithfulness in you. Help us, God, to reflect on you and your goodness, 
and to respond in gratitude to everything that you do. Help us to remember that to be humble before you. Help us, to, Lord, to realize how we got where we are. Lord, you are the one who keeps us. Help us, Lord, to activate a commitment to you, to anticipate how your commitment and why your commitment to us has been. And help us, Lord, to appreciate you for everything to you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to invite you to a relationship with the Lord our Christ right now. He is calling your name. He is asking you for your commitment today. He's asking you to activate your commitment and, Lord, and to appreciate what he has been doing for your life and to anticipate that he can do more for you today and more for you tomorrow than you've ever been able to do for yourself in the past. He kept you all through your past. He'll keep you in your present and he'll keep you through your potential. If you will trust him today, won't you trust him? We hope you will. If you will, contact us at any of those points on the screen. We'll get in touch with you. We'll walk with you and we'll help you on your journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, it is time for communion. We ask now that you will prepare your hearts for communion by gathering your elements, your bread, your crackers, uh, your toast, whatever you have, your juice, your milk, your water, whatever you have. If you'll get that now, uh, we'll be ready to dine with him. Because God says to us, as he was getting ready to go on that faithful day, that I won't need you to understand that I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving you with my presence. Here's how I want you to remember and reflect and repent through that process. I want you to remember that my body is getting ready to be broken for you, to be battered and bruised for you. And as often as you eat this bread, you make sure that you show forth that I, my death until I come, let's eat together. And in the same manner, he cooked, took the cup and he blessed it and said, drink all of it, that you may show and remember that this is my redeeming blood that is going to purchase your salvation. And every time you drink it, you reflect on my death, how they pierced me in my side, how they beat me and blood came streaming down. Let's drink together. That blood that came streaming down, boy, I took care of the penalty for all of our sins, put us in the right space and place with God so that we might have a right to praise him and a right to presence with him and fellowship with him as we fellowship with one another. Brothers and sisters, we thank you so much for joining us in with us in communion. We thank you for joining us in this moment. We thank you for being present with us on this virtual space today. We, we know that we could not continue to do the ministry that we do without your, without your participation. And listen, we continue to ask you, share this message with someone today that needs to hear it. You, and if you can, if you and God decide so, we want you, brothers and sisters, to prayerfully consider making a contribution to this ministry. The ways be popping up on the screen, how you can do that. And we uh, give glory and honor to you for doing that. And we give glory and honor to God for having it, him to place it upon your heart to do so. We promise you that we will be good stewards of what you give to us. Because he says he who will be a steward must be found faithful. And we thank you for it. Brothers and sisters, we look forward with anticipation to uh, the second Sunday in April when we will uh, prayerfully, hopefully, if the numbers keep continue going down, gather and re-enter into our sanctuary for in-person worship. Uh, on April the 10th, I believe that will, will be second Sunday in April. We solicit your prayers as we pr pray and plan for that and, and get ready for you to be there. We want you to know that the numbers are going down, but they are not going. Continue wearing your mask, continue washing your hands, continue watching your distance. And please, if there is no health reason or legitimate reason not to, please get vaccinated. Please, please, please do that for us and God will be praised and all of us can be better. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to thank you again for worshiping with us in this virtual space. Uh, we want to uh, 
say to you, uh, remember that the uh, Know Your Rights Forum today is virtually. Please register for that. If you have not already, it's at 2 o'clock p.m., sponsored by the Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated, uh, uh, Sorority Incorporated. We pray that you'll be there and we pray that it will benefit you and your life. Amen. Let's hear the benediction for the day. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace. Now let the whole church say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, by God's grace and his goodness, we'll see you next time.